Henri Matisse was born in 1869 in a small town in France. His parents owned a general store and wanted Henri to take over the family business, but Henri decided to become a lawyer instead. At 20, he got very sick and had to be admitted to the hospital. His mother bought him a box of paints, and from that day on, Henri decided to be an artist. He was called the King of Color because he recognized that color played a big part in how we perceive light. Now that we've gotten a chance to see what he looked like in real life and take a look at his beautiful, bright, colored paintings, let's go ahead and make our own still life example inspired by Henri Matisse's still lifes. I hope that you are able to recognize lots of different patterns, shapes, and lines that create his artwork. So let's go ahead and get started with some of our own basic shapes. As you begin, you can use one of the vase shapes that I have provided in the back of the room, or feel free to also use some of your own ideas to make your shape for your vase. It does not have to use one of the patterns if you do not want to. Then, as I've drawn around the vase, make a table so it looks like the vase is sitting on the table, as well as some flowers coming out of the pot. Remember at the beginning, I showed a couple different examples of flowers. So you can make your flowers any way that you want to. Feel free to do that. Feel free to use some overlap and design and draw them at any way you feel best or whatever way you like a lot. Once you've done his flowers, vase, and table, let's go ahead and make it look like it's in a room. Draw a horizontal line behind the table, a vertical line for a wall, and a slanted line as well. Then it looks like you've got three parts, back wall, side wall, and floor. Feel free to also add any kinds of patterns and designs to your vase, to your walls, to your floor, and just have some fun creating some patterns to this project. Now that you've completed your pencil drawings, please take a marker and outline with black. I like to use a nice thick line for the areas that I want emphasized and skinny lines for the designs and patterns. So thick line versus thin line. Lastly, go ahead and have some fun coloring. Notice that when I color, I like to use a lot of bright colors. Kind of like the examples that we talked about at the beginning, Matisse is known for his bright colors. So when I start putting on a color, I like to add a little bit more color into the project so that it's not just a so solid flat color, but I prefer using lots of different colors to layer it up, to use it, and make a lot of interest. So rather than colors straight from the crayon, I'm going to layer my colors to make it look more interesting to the viewer. Make it look a little bit more like form, like it's 3D. So where I have some yellow, I added some orange. Where I have my brown, I'm adding in some red. Where I have my purple, I'm gonna add on some darker purple. And it just helps make that look like it's popping with full of color. Here's another quick example to get you going and thinking about what you wanna do. Remember, your vase can be any of the vases that I have provided, or feel free to draw your own. Once you've drawn it, don't forget back wall, sidewall, and floor. Then I had some fun making in my own designs for my flowers. But instead of seeing the stems this time, I thought I'm gonna layer up my flowers and add a lot of them to really make it look like that's a vase that's completely full with flowers. Now that I've got my flowers drawn and layered on up into the picture, let's go ahead and start thinking about what kinds of patterns, what kinds of designs do I want to include into my project. Remember those examples from the very beginning of the video? Matisse loved pattern. What kinds of lines, shapes, or designs do you want to include into your project? I think this really makes it look much more visually interesting and more exciting to the viewer. It's kind of interesting to start finding a balance between interesting lines and designs and what areas you might want to emphasize. So remember that emphasis, thick line for the areas you want everyone to notice and be able to see, and then you can use the skinny part of your marker 
to add more of the designs that you've drawn. Again, so my thick line is gonna be areas like my vase, my table, and those three lines that I used to make it up. Then I'll use the skinny part of my marker for the patterns and designs that I put in. Thick lines for areas I want everybody to see, skinny lines for areas that are just making up my designs, because you're gonna have a lot of those. See the thick line? I use the side of my marker. I'm using the skinny part of my marker for any of the designs that are inside. Just the tip of the marker compared to the side of the marker will give you different line qualities. Lastly, let's go ahead and take a moment and start to color. Remember from the first example, try not to stick with just one color, layer up your colors, make it more interesting and visually exciting. You might want to start with the lightest color first and value and get your darker values on top of the lighter color. So I usually started out with my light green, moving into my darker green. I started out with my light orange, moving it into a red. I started out with my yellow and started bringing in some pinks and more reds. Again, this is gonna make your project visually more exciting and interesting. Light value first, darker value around. I just love the way that the colors just seem to pop and really get exciting and fun to look at. Really takes your coloring up a level. Let's go ahead and finish up with our background and um, the rest of our designs. Thanks everybody for watching. Have fun.